Hey, what's going on summoners? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Crumbs and today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty big news update. We'll be diving into all of the changes Riot has released since our last update. There's a ton of different things to cover, especially since the season will be ending soon. Whether it's a look at some crazy new skins, meta changes, new champions, or whatever it may be. Here at Pro Guides, we've got you covered. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned till the end so you don't miss out on any important updates now and in the future. Without further ado, let's hop right in. Starting us off, we've got everyone's favorite section, the new skins. To get everyone into the Halloween spirit, Riot has released a series of bewitching skins. Joining the new spooky roster, we have Bewitching Anivia, Cassiopeia, LeBlanc, Nico, and Senna. Each of these skins features all new models, textures, visual effects, sound effects, and a fantastic recall animation. You'll also be able to customize them with chromas, icons, and beautiful borders. You should be able to find them in your shop soon for 1350 RP. Next, we've got a series of skins that are going to be released on November 3rd. This new skin line is called Empyrean, which features a cyberpunk-esque style with crazy yet vibrant colors. These warriors are ready to battle across dimensions to ensure their power remains uncontested. Joining this new line, we've got Empyrean Pike, Jax, Vex, Zack, Zed, Jin, and Lux, all the short named characters. It's a pretty impressive roster for a new skin line, and the skins themselves look amazing. We're unsure of what other details will come with this new line, but more than likely, you can expect icons, chromas, and maybe an emote or two. Finally, for our last few skins, we've got our new Honor Reward and Ranked Season Reward skins. If you placed gold or higher this season, you'll be receiving Victoria Sejuani, which adds a nice golden armor piece to her, and bristle, as well as purple accents. Similar to previous Victoria's skins, you'll receive chromas for each rank you hit above gold, so if you needed a reason to climb a bit higher, here it is. As for the new honor reward, if you ended the season at honor level 5, you'll receive 3 honors Malzahar, as well as the Malzahar champion permanent. Alongside this skin, you'll receive an honor capsule based on your final honor level. For honor level 3, you'll get a capsule, random ward skin, and 3 key shards. For on the level 4, you can expect a capsule, random ward skin, random emote permanent, and 3 key shards. Finally, on your level 5 receives the previously mentioned rewards as well as 3 additional key shards. It's important to note that each capsule is specific to that honor level, so we'll have to see what's included in them. Before we continue on to our next big news update, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. We offer tons of guides and videos to help you take your gameplay to the next level. If courses and lessons aren't your thing though, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24 seven, ready to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive back into the video. In some exciting news, we've got an entire new champion to cover, Keisante, the pride of Nazuma. Since we have the time, we'll be breaking down their abilities as well as possible combos, tactics, and builds. Keep in mind that as of now, we don't have their specific numbers. Anyways, let's dive into Keisante's kit and see just what the new champion can offer. His ultimate ability, All Out, has him send an enemy champion flying over terrain. This deals physical damage and briefly stuns them. As they fly through the terrain, Keisante dashes after the enemy and enters his All Out form for an extended duration. During this form, he loses a percentage of max HP, bonus armor, and bonus MR. However, he will instead gain AD, Omnivamp, and will empower his abilities with different effects. This ultimate reminds us of Set, but with less teamfighting power. You'll be able to single-handedly zone off an enemy and take them on, but you'll be leaving your team behind. That being said, you'll also get far less tanky, which leads us to believe this ultimate is better used for skirmishes, rather than a full-on fight where Keisante will have to be the primary frontline. We covered his ultimate first because it's important to know where his empowered abilities originate from and why they have the effects they do. Let's move on to his passive, Dauntless Instinct. This causes him to mark enemies when he damages them. Once he attacks them again, he will consume the mark to deal damage plus max health physical damage. Think of this as a Leona mark, but with a bit more damage and the ability to self-proc. 
When Quesante is in his all-out form, his passive is empowered and will deal flat physical damage as well as additional max health true damage when the mark is consumed. This essentially makes Quesante a good anti-tank to begin with, but with his empowered passive, it seems like he will dominate even the tankiest of foes. Next, we have his Q, Tofo Strikes, which has him slam his weapon in a small area in front of him. This attack deals physical damage and slows enemies hit. Similar to Yasuo, Quesante gains a stack each time he hits an enemy, and at two stacks, he will instead fire a shockwave that pulls them towards him. His empowered Q will have its cooldown reduced, but will no longer slow enemies that are hit. Let's move on to his W, Pathmaker. On cast, Quesante will begin charging by raising his weapons defensively. During this, he becomes unstoppable and reduces incoming damage. On release, he slams forward, dealing percent max HP physical damage, knocking back the enemy and stunning them based on charge time. This is essentially a mix of Brahm's shield and Set's W with less damage and far more utility. When empowered, this ability's cooldown is instantly refreshed and all of its effects are doubled. This means Quesante can use his full combo, then ult and his W will be back up, which can help a ton with tanking strong attacks. Let's move on to his E, Footwork. This ability gives Quesante a short dash that grants him a shield. If he dashes to an ally, he will shield them as well. When empowered, the dash speed and range is increased, and it gains the ability to go over walls. It's important to note that Footwork allows for other abilities to be cast during it. This means you'll be able to pull off some nice animation cancels similar to Riven, which will be interesting to see. Overall, Quesante looks like a really fun champion, but also looks like a nightmare to balance. With their abilities having so much percent HP damage and the tank having a dash, it's kind of scary. We'll have to be patient to see how Riot deals with him. Now that we've covered his abilities, let's talk about his release skin. Quesante will actually be joining the Empyrean roster as his release skin, and for the first time ever, he will also be getting a prestige one. We've never seen a new champion release with a prestige variation, so we're excited to see what Riot plans to do with it. Will it be easier to obtain, since most people won't have practice on the champion? Will it be harder, because it's on release? Maybe it's a different type of prestige skin altogether, who knows? We don't have much more information about this, but it's exciting to see regardless. Alright, so before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite Pro Guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, if there was one champion's ability you would want added, what would it be? Personally, I'd love an ability where you mind control your own minion or monsters from across the map, kind of like a more complex and stronger maiden. But that's my take, and we want to hear from you. Regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comments section down below. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video. Up next, we've got a breakdown of Riot's previously mentioned preseason changes. We knew from before that Chemtech Dragon was coming back, but now we have more info regarding its power. It will now grant a small amount of tenacity, healing, and shielding when slain. As for its soul, it will grant bonus damage when below a certain percentage of health. AKA, this dragon will help you deal more damage when you're low, kind of like Last Stand. As for the new map that comes with the Drake, it will empower and mutate jungle plants to give them additional features. Blast cones will now have twice the blast range, honey fruits will grant movement speed when consumed, and Scryer's Bloom will reduce reveal wards to 1 HP, as well as giving movement speed towards revealed enemy champions. These changes are looking to make plants far more impactful, and you can honestly get really creative with these upgrades. Next, we have a few quality of life changes that will make the game feel a bit easier and smoother. First up, we've got the addition of leashing range indicators. These will be visual markers that let you know how far camps can be pulled before their patient starts dropping. Alongside this, they're also nerfing how far camps can be leashed, which is a fairly big nerf to junglers like Fiddlesticks who enjoy clearing upwards of two camps at once. While we're still talking about the jungle, we've got a few other key things such as recommended jungle paths. These are going to be first clear paths that are determined by highly skilled junglers and their high mastery of their main champion. It's looking to make jungle a bit easier at the entry level. We just hope that this can be disabled in the settings for more experienced players. And finally, we are bringing back jungle pets that can help leash camps and deal damage to them. As of now, there are three pets that each offer different playstyles, abilities, and can all evolve into a larger stage. First up, we've got the Noxian Ember Cat, which offers an aggressive playstyle as it provides both slows and bonus damage. Next, we have the Ixtali Ixamander, 
with a tank playstyle as it provides its jungler with a shield based on HP as well as bonus slow resistance and tenacity. Finally, we've got the Ionian Cloud Leaper, which offers a high mobility playstyle by giving movement speed as you traverse the map. These pets are a great start to making the jungle easier to get into, as well as giving them more diverse playstyles. Moving on to a few more quality of life changes, we've got some great additions to communication overall. While Riot won't be adding voice comms just yet, they are looking to implement complex pings to help you guide your allies to victory. The new ping wheel features the usual retreat, on my way, assist me, and enemy missing, alongside its new push, all in, hold, and bait. This will help you make plays with your allies without having to type out an entire game plan within 10 seconds. There will also be a new objective voting system that allows you and your team to vote on if you're looking to take Dragon or Baron. With all of these ping changes, there is also going to be an update to off-screen pings where you'll be notified at the edge of the screen where the ping came from. If you thought the Jungle Path recommendation was great, Riot is also looking to add in recommended rune pages, summoner spells, and ability orders. This will essentially give you a built-in guide to your champion if you're looking to learn them or test them out. Finally, we've got a ton of new items for the preseason. Since numbers are still tentative, we'll simply be going over their general concepts and goals. First, we've got Ekathia's Endurance, which will have champions in combat gain a stacking effect up to 10 stacks that will grant armor and MR. At max stacks, this will grant bonus max HP and double its resistances. Its mythic passive will grant armor and MR per legendary item. Next, we've got Radiant Virtue, which will transcend you upon casting your ultimate. During this, you'll gain increased max HP, as well as you and your allies will gain 25 non-ultimate ability haste. Alongside this, you'll also heal a percentage of your max HP every few seconds. Mythic Passive will grant HP per legendary item. We also have Goliath's Ascendiary as a new mythic which will grant a demolish-like effect to enemies. You will charge up a powerful attack over 3 seconds which will drain the target and grant you maximum HP. Kind of like Grasp, its mythic passive grants other legendary items champion size and increased HP. As our final mythic addition so far, we're bringing back Rod of Ages which, like its predecessor, will grant you HP, mana and AP every minute up to 10 times. Upon max stacks, you'll gain a level, and its mythic passive grants other legendary items ability haste. Finally, we've got the return of Spear of Shojin, which will grant your non-ultimate spells ability haste. Alongside this, you'll gain increased movement speed based on your missing health. Overall, there are a ton of item changes, but we were only able to cover the new items since they're not as tentative as a whole. We're excited to see what other big changes Riot will officially announce once the preseason comes along. It's going to be a great season 13. And that sums up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to join our ProGuides family over at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you just won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video and as always, good luck on the rift and may the LP gods smile down upon you.